I haven't received. Yes, no. Oh, right. I, I thought I have to download some software, but. No. Well, I've never tried it, but it seems like it's recording technically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. How are you Sorry. You hear me? <clears throat> yep. Good, great. <coughs> we can start. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, let's go. Let's see. I've got my questions here. Okay, so, uh, well, to start, uh, when you offered me to interview you, I was like, where do I start? There are so many questions, so many things to talk about with such an extensive career, uh, over 3,000 concerts, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, more than 20 albums, more yeah, than think, 20 years. I think it's uh, over 40 albums where I've been involved. With. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Incredible. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where you get so many ideas and so much it's inspiration from. It's just numbers. I mean, I mean, somebody count them. I, I don't really care how many. I mean, but that's what I do. I, I do. I do this since. I mean, I think I joined Stratovars in '84. Mm -hmm. I don't. I am very bad in math, but everybody can count. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a lot of years, yes. Yeah, on the road, I mean, but it's still, still continuing, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see. I've tried to organize my questions yeah. um, by themes. Okay. Okay, so how about we start with Stratovarius, which is sort of the origin? Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's a big subject. Oh. <laughs> so really, uh, power metal in its beginnings in the 80s, uh, with bands like uh, Halloween, Blind Guardian, yeah. uh, they, they didn't have the, sort of the keyboard or this sort of uh, more melodic style at the beginning. Uh, so, but then this like neoclassical touch started later. Uh, yeah. Do you think it was uh, like a turning point uh, in, in this... Um, um, style of metal was that the word? Oh, yeah was it um uh, what what made the what started this change yeah i think i think uh, i think we did it I, I guess because i think we were really the first who were incorporating classical stuff and you know keyboard elements and things like that but when i heard halloween <clears throat> it was like i think 87 or something like that and i really loved them right away and kiska was like 18 you're so in the first key, keeper number one. So I always thought, how how can he sing like that if you're 18? You know, and you know, then I get later get in touch with him, and you know, I mean, he recorded like seven or eight songs for me. But I think, I mean, back in the uh, when when I joined Stratovarius, that was like '84, like I said, and that we started. I mean, we had keyboards right away when I joined in. So. Not solos really, but we really had keyboards. And, and, um, but then, of course, when Jens joined, you know, everything changed completely. I mean, I had this idea in my mind that um, I want to have like a really proper solos, you know, with, with, the, with the keyboard guy. And, and, and the previous auntie, he couldn't really play that. He was really fantastic with sounds and stuff. But other than that, I mean, then, you know, then it really changed. And, and, and I think that we, we really had completely our own style, you know. I mean, all the Stratovarius albums since the episode, my fourth dimension to and Green Space, are very, very kind of have their identity, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but Blind Guardian and, and Halloween and, and Accept and, and all these uh, UDO are very Germanic bands, you know. They're very big yeah. <laughs> elements, so. I mean, I know the guys from Halloween, and, and we are friends, and you know, I mean, we are all friends in this anyway, we should be, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course. So we could say you were a trend, a trend starter when you incorporated this sort of sound. It's important to say, I don't, you know, I think so. I mean, I don't think anybody else did it at that time. So, like, mm -hmm. you know, 95 or on that. And of course, it started like thousands of fans coming, you know. We could see that well, we, we created the sound with the episode. We spent a lot of time for this sound, for the production. So, and then they, people got really nuts about that. So, everybody wanted to have the Stratovarius sound, you know. 
coffee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, which is okay, but you know, you gotta try to have your own own sound, you know. Yeah. You know, you to, <laughs> mm-hmm. Whatever. I mean, in, in recordings, I mean, they are not secrets. I mean, they are not really secrets. I mean, they are very basic things, but you just have to know where to look for, what, which equipment to use and stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, then. Um... If I'm not mistaken, you were influenced by Rainbow. So would you say that Richard Blackmore is your biggest influence? Yes, that's that's he he has to be. I mean, I was like uh, 14 when I heard Smoke on the Water on the radio. I heard the riff, and that was the live version made in Japan. And I just had to have the radio on, and I heard this riff, and I'm what is that? You know, right away it was really I was really hooked, and mm-hmm. then I I bought. Actually, I show this to you because you have to see this. I just bought this. Oh! <laughs> this is the first album I ever bought, you know. I was back in the 1980. And, and you know, I, I played it so much that I had to buy another one. Because it was this vinyl. So. And I, I started, you know, really playing a lot along along the Rainbow Records. So I can play a lot of solos of Blackmore. Still, I haven't met the guy. Still, I hope I can meet him before he goes because it was really close a couple of times. One, once in Madrid, actually. Mm-hmm. I, I, I got to know uh, um, the mother of Candice Knight. Um, uh, it's like a really cool woman, and then, then, then they 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 um, um, had a concert in Cancillier in, in Madrid, mm-hmm. and I was there, and then uh, she wanted to have some kind of a fence, uh, like a, from black black <laughs> plastic, so people wouldn't see Blackmore when he comes to the venue, and I was there, I knew the guys of the venue and stuff, so we arranged that and. So I'm there. I saw the concert of Blackmore's Night, and, and um, uh, Rich is there. And I, I talked to this uh, Candice's mother and said, "Can I meet him?" And yeah, well, I I, I can ask. I'm like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know. Then she goes there. And then, well, he's playing football in the backstage. I'm like, oh. well, I know Blackmore's interviews because he's known to have these jokes. And he, he can be really serious, but Total nonsense. So I said, okay, I, I don't want to bother him. And, and then she just said, come to the hotel, but I didn't go for some reason. I guess I was scared. So yeah, but Blackmore and, you know, the Purple Rainbow uh, was with this album, you know, this Ronnie Chef Dio, you know. And I met him. He was uh, like a, well, a friend, really, because, you know, I'm, I was amazing. I saw a concert in Finland, a festival. And I, he was playing these songs like Man of the Silver Mountain, Catch the Rainbow. And I was on stage sitting because he put a chair for me. Oh. It's funny because um, he was like greeting people before the show in the backstage, which was like a container, like small metallic weirdo. And there was one guy before me asking Ronnie, like, how can I sing like that? And he answered, because I'm so good. <laughs> he, he said that okay. because I'm like, okay, and then you know, I go out and I watch to the clouds and I see two rainbows in the clouds, like small rain. Yeah, I saw them. I swear to God. Wow. And then I, I I go to the um, see the show and I've never heard so loud monitors on stage. It's only vocals, you know, and brutally loud. And that guy was like a demon, you know, was so powerful. I mean, yeah, gates of Babylon, all these things, you know. So. Yeah, Rainbow is really uh, for me the originator of, of, of my, 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 my heavy rock, um, you know, career. You know, then came of course there was also the guitar players like Randy Rhodes, uh, Gary Moore, uh, Aldi Meola is one of those who was really uh, for me um, like one of the picking because I saw Friday night in San Francisco, which is like a live recording with, with uh, Paco de Lucia and. Uh, mm-hmm. jo- uh, and I was like, how the, how the hell can they play with acoustic guitar like that? Was, <laughs> that can be done with acoustic guitar. Surely it can be done with the electric one, you know. And then I started practicing like eight hours a day 
for 10 years, every single day. Wow. And since 16 to 26, I was really following this really systematic approach, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, practice makes perfect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, not only that. I mean, you gotta have more than that. I mean, everybody can be fast. I mean, people, uh, because I give some online less online lessons and and face to face lessons when I still was doing that in Finland, like twenty years. I mean, they only want to play fast, but that's mm -hmm. nothing. That's nothing really. It's just a lot of practicing. I mean, you have to have a soul. You have to have character. Uh, you have to know yourself. It's a singer, it's the same, you're a singer, you know what I mean. I mean, you have to really sing your soul out and the heart, you know, from the heart. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just one of the, one in the line, you know, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and things sound differently if you do it yes. with, no, that, that soul. I, the thing is that I don't, I don't think you can really uh, do it consciously, like deciding that I'm going to do it now. You know, you either have it or you don't. <laughs> <laughs> You either have it or I think it's a lot to do with your personal development, where you are, where you are in your life, and you know, all the things that are going on. So you, you hopefully grow and evolve as a person. You know? Then you can take that to your music. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, I've been doing so many productions for all the years. So I mean, I've got to meet these amazing people and seeing the egos involved in the productions and stuff. And, you know, you gotta deal with those psychologically many times. Mm -hmm. I guess sometimes they help and sometimes they don't. Yeah, I mean, you know, you get, I mean, singers are really difficult sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> really, I mean, they, they can be, you know, without mentioning any names here, you know, they can be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, continuing with uh, Strato. Um, so your relationship in the end was, I understand, quite bad. Uh, so the reason for you leaving, uh, was it uh, that you decided to leave or were you invited to leave? No, it was really a development because uh, people don't really understand that each album since the episode was better. I mean, from 95, there was episode visions, um, destiny, infinity elements. And then you reach this, you know, high level and where you go. Uh, you come down, you know, and then we did the black album. There was a stupid stunt which never should have been done, and all these things, you know. But I mean, in the end, we really tried to record uh, this Revolution Renaissance album, and we were in the studio in Sonic Pump Studios in Helsinki, and we were there. Jörg Michael told me we need Vision Spirit. Nobody had it. Our reporter was having his bass on his lap, and everybody was like, just. I felt, that, you know. I, I I didn't get it, but we recorded it and I edited it for drums like for one week and I couldn't get it done. And with Jörg, it was never like this before. So there, there were many um, hints you know, that it's over. And then we just, we, we all were brutally honest, you know, in the end. And, and um, we just said, we gotta go separate ways, you know. It's, it's the best for everyone, you know. And then I made this uh, waiver of rights where I gave them the name and the rights for the name. And then I got, actually, I started thinking, because I was really jealous about the new Stratovarus at the time, you know. I was thinking, okay, I give yeah. them the but they cannot use it kind of a thing. Stupid, really stupid things. And now I feel ashamed about that, but, you know, we are okay now. You know, we're friends. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing, you know. I just got an email again yesterday. I think he's going to do solos for my, my next solo album. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I mean. Um, yeah, but in the end, it was like, you know, it was like a marriage that doesn't work. You, yeah. you, gotta, you gotta go. You just gotta go. You know? mm -hmm. But, well, actually, I find it, um, like, a, a very nice gesture that you gave up the rights. You, you decided to give them up. Yeah. To them. I, I, uh, which you, you, really, you could have uh, kept them. Right. Well, because it was my name. I mean, I had to, well, I didn't invent the name, but I was, I owned the name. And I had the um, contracts with which each individual individual musician too. But I could have said, okay, you can't use the name. So I could have absolutely said, mm -hmm. but I didn't feel right about that because I thought, and I still think, I don't need that name. You know, it's yeah. part of my history. It's, I'm really proud of everything we've done, and, and you know, musically, and, and you know, 
And I really think that the, the way the guys are doing now, their music is fantastic. I mean, I love them. I really absolutely think they're perfect. You know, there's a lot of talent in that band. There's Jens, there's uh, Laura Pora is related to Sibet. You know? I mean, Codibel is amazing vocalist or something. And, and all these, you know, uh, incredible drummers. So there's a lot of talent. You know, Matthias is great, great composer, great, great guitar player. We're friends, you know, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Love Unbreakable, I think it's a fantastic song. It's a really, really good song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, but there was, you know, I mean, it's really, uh, people want sometimes make these fights that are not there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like I post something in my Facebook and they're like immediately like, how can you, you know, how can you this and that? And, you know, mm -hmm. you know. So what do you miss the most from being there in that band? I miss the friendship. You know, I miss the tours. I miss the jokes, especially Jens's jokes, because this guy was super. I mean, the, the things he did on tour. I mean, oh my god! <laughs> he, he used to have like a, a saw, and crowbar, and a hand puppet, and gas horn. And every backstage we, we were, he's, we, he was putting one piece of wood from the door. So at the end of the tour, he had like sixty pieces of small wood, and Anders Johansson. Still happening. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. This guy it was never boring. Just this guy. Mm -hmm. I can tell you all the things here because I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I can't. Mm -hmm. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what's your favorite album that you composed or well, that you did with them? It's gotta be Element. It's gotta be Element. Mm -hmm. Element. That's, that's really the peak for me. You know, I mean, it's artistically, lyrically, production-wise, it's really there. I mean, I spent four weeks just to write lyrics. For that. And that is a lot for you. Yeah, it is a lot. I mean, numbers <laughs> a, a day per song or something. But that was really important for me to you know, really make it lyrics. And and I think they really like almost poetry at some point. Some of the lyrics, you know, drop in the ocean, elements, song, you know. There's a lot of my personal philosophy there as well in that album. So, but it's kind of sometimes kind of preachy, which I really don't like now. I mean, well, it's 20 years after, so you, know. yeah. <laughs> you, you, you evolve as a person. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will we have a reunion? Yeah, there's, you know, I, I hope so. I mean, but reunion as, as, a, um, as a word, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I hope that we can do something together like in three or four years. Uh, mm -hmm. Like Hello Kitty, similar stuff. Mm -hmm. Would be two lineups. I would never suggest that, uh, that I would replace Matthias as, as a guitar player because this is just not right. I mean, life goes onwards, not backwards. So mm -hmm. I think they're gonna they're doing a new album this year, and, and I'm doing mine. So in some years we have to sit down. I mean, they know what I think about this, and, and uh, you know, I'm not pushing them to do anything. But I hope we can do one more record. Together, me, Matthias, Timo, Jens, you know, and make a really cool power metal album, and then world tour. That would be the best. You know, because you know, had that spark again. You visit the same places. You know, show people we are friends. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I think so. I really think so. <laughs> then, um, okay, so we know that you had some difficult years uh, regarding um, mental health issues. Uh, do you think that people, either artists or, or fans, everybody in your environment are not aware enough of this? Do you think that some people uh, were not fair uh, with how they treated you? Well, as a public person, I mean, you have to take some shit, it's for sure. But, you know, what I think is that um, um, they diagnosed me as what they call bipolar disorder. Like back in 2004, it's like a long time ago, and I, I was I was eating lithium and stuff like that, which never really helped me. And I had some psychotic episodes, manic. Now I've been really cool for like almost five, six years. There's nothing. I'm really in the middle. So I don't take any medicine, and, you know. And many of these people uh, who criticize me never met me. You know, they never hear me speaking, they never look me into the eyes, you know. 
and they they think that they know me from some stupid interview, you know, and they based on their ideas for that, like especially written interviews. And sometimes because when you do hundreds of them, you get kind of bored, and then you might say stupid things, you know, and then you know, <laughs> yeah. asshole kind of thing, so, you know. But yeah, I mean, unfair. Yeah, of course. I mean, but you know, sometimes I'm also unfair. So. But you have to, you know, as a public person, you have to take certain amount of this kind of treatment from the fans. You just mm -hmm. gotta be positive, you know, be there, as, be who you are. Mm -hmm. Then everything's gonna be fine. Do you consider you had enough support from people? On the other hand, like. I asked about criticism or not being supportive, but do you, did you have support from Absolutely. the people you needed? Absolutely, yes. I had, I mean, my, my close circle, yes, and, and uh, the fans have been really supportive all the time. So it's just a really minority, one or two percent, you know, they're like mm -hmm. really criticizing. They have to be there. My Facebook is really like a social experiment. It's like, uh, I always say that kind of a little joke that there's a, there's a, a place for bacteria in the ecosystem too. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Mm -hmm. Social media is, uh, well, it's, it's got its ups and downs. <laughs> Wonderful way to, you know, also to, to, to tell people who you are and, and really affect to them. Like music affects the people. You cannot, when, when a person hears, uh, a song, uh, it goes straight to your heart and, 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 and mind, and you cannot, uh, you cannot um, resist this. It's like a magic, you know, you cannot. It's like a mental state of the composer right away to you, you know. It's really naked, you're really nude. So my, my character is completely in my song. You know, the lyrics, the melody, it's right there. You know. Ever since, I'm, I've written like almost 300 songs in my career, so, you know. Mm -hmm. It's uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> it is. I mean, that's what I do. I, I write songs. I'm a, I'm a composer. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever thought about trying other styles? I mean, you have got some songs that are not mm -hmm. like metal, um, but are you thinking about it, about uh, trying something completely different? Well, I am. I love pop music, absolutely. I mean, uh, even in the um, jazz of Dicky My Own Grave, I do like even Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys. I love Max Martin, who is a Swedish producer. I love his stuff, I mean, love his melodies, the way he writes, the way he produces stuff, and, you know. I mean, I am um, planning to do a musical. I've been thinking about this for like seven years now. And it's oh. kind of getting together, but that's going to take some, some time because it's a big thing. I'm looking for subject, I think I found it already, and, and then it's like writing a story. I mean, I did album for Sana, Warrior of Light, which mm -hmm. uh, there's a storyline there, which I wrote and then wrote the music for that. Uh, I, I I do like um, Him to Life, my, my second solo album, it's really pop, there's no, it's not metal at all. Oh, I mean, okay. Yeah, so there's Key to the Universe, it's really pop stuff. And I remember when Nuclear Blast, which released is like back in 2002. I mean, they were really like, but they got the master, like, what is this? Uh, I mean, kind of a thing. So it's like, I, I, I composed those songs on tour, actually, of Infinity Tour, because there's so much time on tours for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I booked a room in a hotel, uh, in, a, in a city, we, we, and I go to the hotel with my, my recording stuff, and I just wrote the songs on the tour. Mm -hmm. So I'm a music lover, I don't care um, what kind of music it is, if I really like the song, it has good melodies, good lyrics. I don't like rap and reggaeton, those are <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, reggaeton is what's really most famous now, and I would say all the world, I mean, it's what's moving everything. Yeah, what do you think about that? It's boring, because it's always the same rhythm. It's like, I, I, listen, I listen to this, you know, and I mean, it's always the same rhythm. And it, it seems to be like always the same melodies too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, what, what, what do I know? I mean, if somebody likes it, fine. I mean, I just, I cannot listen to this, but it's everywhere. Here in Mexico, it's really popular. You know? it's, yeah, you it go, is in Spain too. Everywhere, you know, it's absolutely, you know, mm -hmm. up in the restaurant, it's right there. 
So yeah, but you know, it's just music. At the end of the day, you know, you shouldn't really criticize too much. If somebody likes something, nobody cannot can say that you know you cannot. You know, yeah. Play. But for me, it's nothing. As a musician, as a music lover, kind of melody is really the rhythms are the same. It's boring for me. Mm-hmm. And I have to say that whoever invented that should be executed slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think so too. <laughs> Uh, well, talking about the music industry, um, I'm sure you know about uh, Marco Hietala's uh, departure from Nightwish. When he wrote his uh, departure note, uh, he yeah. was criticizing the music industry, saying that it was, uh, well, not a very good uh, ambience and it's hard to to live on it. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, I know Marco since 25 years. And, um... I mean, he must have his reasons. I haven't talked to him about it, but I know that there are these, these sharks around Nightwish. It's a big band, you know, and you met Tuomas. Yeah. He's a sweet, lovely guy. Absolutely. Yes. Must be the sweetest guy I've ever met. You know? mm-hmm. and, and Marco is just fed up with this. You know, I think he, he doesn't want to be exploited. You know, he just feels that it's not fair how the money's been divided. In Nightwish, I, I'm sure it's fair. I'm sure that's fair. But, you know, Spotify, you know, the, the agents, uh, the, the bookers, agents, all these things, I think he just feels, he felt that, you know, he doesn't want to do this anymore. I mean, for sure we hear about the guy. I mean, he's going to do more music. Maybe more tarot. I mean, he did wonderful solo album in Finnish, you know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Have you heard it? I've heard, I think, one song. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, he has a really amazing voice, this guy, you know. Mm-hmm. But many people think it's Holofine's fault. I mean, it's nothing. I mean, it's even a statement says it's nothing to do with Tuoma. Of course. You know, super sweet. I mean, I mean, I, re- I have to tell this story because it was like a Nightwish, a, a platinum disc party in Helsinki. And, and I went there like with Koti I and Yari. They were like these German girls uh, flew there to see Ocean Soul. And Ocean Soul was just so drunk. It was so funny, he was dancing like Russian dances and stuff, and you know, it, it was so funny. To, they were like, is that the guy, you know? <laughs> so there was uh, Alex Elijah was there as well, and, and you know, oh. he, yeah, he was there. Everybody was there, of course, so, you know, but, and, 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 and Thomas was like, many times, I, I gave him a call, and, you know, because they have this wonderful song uh, called, um, what is it called? Uh, Swanhart. Mm-hmm. I, I like. I heard that he's drunk, and I said, "You know, you better be careful, so you're not you're you're not going to be Swanhart." I just said, "I think I always am." <laughs> <laughs> I have the humor, you know. But now I don't know what the guy's going to do because they need a vocalist too and bass player. You know, it's kind mm-hmm. of a, maybe they go back just with floor. I mean, floor is an amazing vocalist. So. I think, but it's going to maybe reinvent again the whole night thing if they, if they want to continue. And I hope they will, because I think Thomas. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. So, do you feel the same way uh, about the music industry um, as, as Marco did in, in saying uh, his statement? I, I mean, you know, you got to find your way. You can swim in. I, I'm not really that kind of extreme i wouldn't i wouldn't like leave the career i mean i, I don't think marco will either it's just that he doesn't want to be exploited i mean mm-hmm. to a certain extent you will always be exploited in this business it's it's you cannot avoid that i think i i, I think so that you, you just got to find the right people to work with and you just have to express your talent and music and different areas of whatever you, especially now in this COVID times when everybody's really fucked with financially in music, you know, there's no gigs, you know, and you know, mm-hmm. I find different ways to, to survive. I mean, and I've been lucky. I mean, what can I say? I'm still here you know, doing music, you know, it's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Great. So, about your projects, um, so you started uh, Revolution Renaissance, uh, Symphonia, yeah. Avalon, Infinite Visions. So, you've started a lot of projects. Um, yeah. 
Why is that? Like maybe you could have uh, started with one and, and this one would have evolved. Why did you start so many different projects? I think it's after Stratovars, it was Revolution Renaissance and we did two fantastic records, but they were nothing like Power Man, you know? Because when you do this for like 20 years, at least I was like, I got bored of that. Because everybody just wants Black Diamond and Paradise all the time. So <laughs> I cannot forever write those songs again. So, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? So, Revolution Renaissance with this Age of Aquarius, which is a really good album. I, I really love I think it's one of the best ever in my career. And Trinity after that. And then, you know, Symphonia was, I mean, just, you know, everything was really natural. It's not that, you know, I planned this with calculator stuff. It's just, you know, you got Andre Mathers was living in Sweden. I, I got in touch with him, old friend, you know. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's fair to say that at the Strata Wars, I have never really had the proper band again, you know. Because that was so magical what we had with these guys, you know. I mean, we knew it too, you know. When, when we got Jens in Europe and we were in the studio, for episode, we just knew. We felt the energy, the songs were cool, everything was so, you know, and then it really exploded. So you gotta, you gotta hope that the people in, in music would have that kind of experience at once in their, their life, at least, you know, lifetime, because I certainly did. And now it's just, you know, whatever comes, I mean, I don't think I will ever have a band like that anymore because it was so huge, you know, it was so big, mm-hmm. tours and everything. Well, you know, I feel very nostalgic about that time, you know, all the tours and, and, and friendship and everything, so all recordings and but got to build up with it, so many promotion tours everywhere. And, you know, I, I've been to Japan ten times, stuff like that. So, you know, mm-hmm. it's one, you know, but you know, projects like Infinite Visions was, was not really meant to be a project, it was really a, a band, but you know, People just didn't care, I guess, you know, because the crowdfunding we did, it didn't succeed. So, and then they, they say that it wasn't publicized. I think it was, it was. Every metal media had that, you know, everybody knew about it. So, <laughs> songs and everything. So, now I'm just, I'm going to do the fourth one, then fourth solo album. I'm going to use some of those songs and write new ones, you know. And, and I, I, I'm going to invite some really famous names. To, uh, you know, mm-hmm. to make it. So, what do you think about the other members of Infinite Visions uh, continuing uh, by uh, their way? I, I mean, I heard about it. I didn't know. Actually, I, I, I it's fantastic. I mean, I think it's going to be. Um, I mean, Eric Kramer is a fantastic vocalist and a really cool guy. I mean, he's a good, good guy. I mean, all of them. Um, I don't know what kind of music they will do, but the drummer is excellent. Paolo is an excellent drummer, I mean, all of the guys. Jimmy, Jimmy is really amazing keyboard player too. So, so, I mean, there was a lot of talent in there. Songs were great, but you know, put them out and then nobody was interested, no label was interested. So then I just have to place the fire and say, it doesn't work, you know. So that's it. So, so you know, do something else. What do you think went wrong? Nothing, really. I mean, you just... Honest to God, I did the same thing. I, I composed the songs, you know, we made a demo, we, we sent them out and that's it. That's all you can do, you know. Nothing went wrong. It's just not meant to be. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. I don't consider it as a failure. I consider it as, as a gateway to something new. Uh, okay. And then, um, so in Avalon, for example, you don't count as you said, you don't do like a a band. Uh, you you count with collaborations from different singers. Um, so do you prefer to do that instead of forming like a fixed band and have a fixed uh, um, singer, a fixed uh, drummer? Do you prefer to do collaborations? I would love to have a band, but you know, Avon is really a pro- project of Seraphine of Perugino of Frontiers. It's his idea to begin with. I mean, he called me back in 2011 or something, and if I would like to do three rock operas. I mean, what is a rock opera anyway? I mean, who who says what it is, who defines what it is? Mm-hmm. But his idea, and, and then, you know, it's like Avantasia, mini Avantasia, 
Okay. Like with Tobias did, it's amazing. I mean, this this small guy became really big from full data. And I still remember him coming to Helsinki with Bangalore Opera tapes and you know, because I mixed it and sort of produced it, I guess. And you know, it was so badly recorded. It was so badly recorded. Mm -hmm. I had this struggle with the mix in the film works. That's been also, but it, I, I like the album. I mean, there's some really, really good songs, and I could, you know, I could see that this guy is going to be big. That was so clear, you know, right? But I, I knew that. And it's a funny story because I was doing press for episode in, in um, I think, Nuremberg or something. And, and uh, I had like all day interviews booked for the, in my hotel room. And then the last guy was called Tobias Summit. Which I never heard of. So this guy's a small guy with a CD player, and he says right away, "I'm not a journalist, Tim. I'm sorry, but I have to book this just to meet you, and I, I want to play you my music, and I wanted to produce our next album." I thought that's kind of unique. So let's listen to it, and you know, mm -hmm. the guy right away, you know, his humor and his positivity and uh, his his uh, talent, and, and he's a really super super talented guy. I mean, and that's so serious about this stuff, so super serious. I mean, he makes a lot of jokes and stuff, but with music, he's not making any jokes. Mm -hmm. so it's just, you know, okay, let's do it. I mean, sure, why not? I mean, it's fantastic. I, I love Frank Lloyd Opera. I love everything what he has done, you know, and I think he's doing new Avantasia now. I think he's doing new Avantasia at the moment. So. Mm -hmm. I really, I really miss him. I miss our thoughts. And, and, you know, I have to post an email. I thought I closed everything, but... <laughs> okay, so there we are. What was the question? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if um, you prefer to have collaborations with different yeah. singers, for example, rather uh, than having a fixed one. Projects, because, you know, you get kind of best of both worlds. You get these amazing singers like Kiska, you know, and you're in London, and, and Rob Rock and Sharon and you know Elise, all this, you know, Russell. I do like to also I work with unknown singers too. I mean I like I sometimes do songs with some people that really like their voice and, and, and spirit. But you know, there's twenty four hours in a day and I try to make each day count because you never know what's gonna happen. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah, but I would prefer to have a band like Stratovars, but I don't think it's possible anymore. You know? I don't think so. Mm, will you try to do so? Was well, there, was Revolution I thought, Renaissance? I, uh, I, I sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I did try with even visions, but the problem is that I don't like to try. I, I like to do because when you try, mm -hmm. it's it contains the element of failure. You know, trying means as a word. For me, it's like people say, "I'm going to try." Well, just do. You know, if you try, it's almost saying I, it might fail. You know. Yeah, but if you don't try, you well, can never do. succeed. <laughs> That's what I say, you know. Or in the studio, for example, with, with producing the vocalist, uh, I'm always in the same space. There's never a glass between. So, I mean, in whatever room, with my laptop, and there's a distance two or three meters, and it's like an energy exchange. And, and if the singer says, I'm sorry, I said, there's no I'm sorry in the studio. Please don't say I'm sorry. Um, and, and okay, I'm going to try. Well, just sing it. Don't try. Just sing it. Because this really trying for me is really involves the element of failure. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> the school of production. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now uh, we're going to another topic, which is like now, the yeah. present. Uh, so you're in Mexico. First of all, uh, what made you uh, decide to go to Mexico? Apart from the awesome weather, awesome food. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, certain life situations um, brought me to this road that led me to this country about uh, 14 months ago. And you know, it's like what I, when destiny calls, I take the call. You know, I have to. I do believe in destiny. You know. So, um, uh, for me, it's not, uh, it's, it's not even a matter of faith, it's a matter of, I know, 
you know, at this point. And whenever this happens, I know there's a reason why I'm here, you know. Well, I'm going to go to Finland next week because I have family. I have a family there, but um, and it's really cold. But you know, apart from that, this country is amazing. I mean, but Latin America has always been very good for me and for Strato. So we did seven tours here and stuff. But about this um, destiny, uh, I was in Berlin in 2006, and this thing really happened. So I met this guy from from Iceland. And it was like Berlin Film Festival, and I was doing promotion for Stratowars Black Album, as we call it, Black Album. So this guy was like uh, really weird, because the first thing he told me, he said, uh, I know who you are, but I don't know how you look like. So I'm like, excuse me, what does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. And so we go, we go to drink, and, and this guy had like a black notebook, of, like he wrote, and every girl we met, he asked the phone number, and every girl gave the phone number. And that guy was not even handsome, you know. So I don't know. And then he asked me, like, where is your notebook? So I'm like, I don't, I don't need, it, you know. So then we were like drinking, and he was telling me, you know, really weird things. And then I'm in the car in the front seat, and he's behind me, and I start feeling he's reading my thoughts. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not drunk and nothing, not psychotic. I, I'm reading there, and I, 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 I think in my mind. If you read my thoughts, knock me in the back twice. In five seconds, I feel in my back. He was reading my thoughts. Wow. And then um, we go outside of the car, and he, he just tells me that um, him and I have a friend. He hugged me. He said, he's the middleman between God and the devil. He told me that I'm going to die in my sleep when I'm 70. Oh. He said... Uh, I don't care about people much, but for you, Timo, I would take bullet anytime. And then uh, we go to my hotel and he's leaving and he's this close to me. I, I see two black wings in his back, like holograms, like this long. Wow. So he had like a, some kind of telekinetic things to he project to my mind, you know, because as I saw the wings, they were holograms, not feathers, but black hologramic wings. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I freaked out. This guy really read my thoughts. And so for this, I know that there is a supernatural element here that exists. And therefore, destiny, for me, it's, it's just reality, you know. So that's why I'm in Mexico. And, and, you know, the way I see my life now is, of course, I make certain plans, but I don't plan it too much because I believe that whatever is there will happen anyway. I'm going to meet certain people I have to meet on my path. I already have. I'm not thankful for everything mm-hmm. ever, I've ever encountered my path. I'm really thankful for that. And the biggest ones I'm thankful for are the assholes, because, you know, <laughs> they teach, teach you the best who you really are. You know, like, you know, this, you're driving a car and there's someone in front of you, like, you know, it's not the person, it's me. Mm-hmm. It's inside of me using that car, you know, as an instrument for my hate or anger, whatever, or jealousy, you know. Mm-hmm. Can I blame another person for my jealousy? No, it's in me. It's everything in me. So how can I say that because of you, I'm jealous? It's not true. Mm-hmm. So these are things that I've been working on in, in my life for like many, many years now. And, and something is going to come out from that, and maybe as a book. You know, maybe as a book. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, but it's destiny calling. That's what I think. I'm curious, do you still have contact with the with this special man? I don't want to. <laughs> I, <laughs> I have his WhatsApp, you know, but I don't want to talk to him because I don't think he's a good guy. I mean, he's, uh, he's actually a very big film producer in, in Iceland, Reykjavik. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he's been producing a lot of films. And, and, you know, I even, because I wrote this book, Loneliness of a Thousand Years, and he's in the book. Even his name is there, so mm-hmm. and that book you can download for free in the net. I don't make any money from that, so yeah. But this guy, you know, he's there are certain people here who are like have get kicks out of other people, like he was clearly getting kicks out of me, you know. So, mm. But I had to sort of meet the guy because I, I had a lot of fear in me, and he kind of put it out to my existence, my consciousness. So I had to work with that fear, you know. And then, you know, people say that, some people say hate 
is the opposite of love, but it's fear. It's really fear. I mean, we are so, especially now with the COVID times, people are so scared. You know? mm-hmm. And uh, the virus is real. I've seen people who die about uh, the existence of the virus. There must be a reason for that. You know? And what is behind that? What does it want to do? We are bacteria ourselves, you know, human beings like 90%. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, um, there's vaccination, but there's mutation. Then you have to have a vaccination for mutation, you know, and it's like ongoing battle. Why is it there? That's the question. You know? And why are not uh, the recovery figures reported, like the deaths you know, or, or cases? I don't see any media uh, reporting how many people have recovered, you know, in the world. And that's 77 million. Has to be said. Has to be said. Mm-hmm. You know, so, or websites or whatever. You know, there and we I are. Think that there is something going on here that I, I really don't think is, is too nice because I think there's there's some money involved here somehow, as always. And I think there's going to be like, we're going to see like a, um, a disappearance of the of the money as a, as a physical element. I, th- I think it's going to be just digital in the future, just digital. No mm-hmm. coin, no notes, you know, nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But I don't think about it too much either because I, I've done my part. There was a time that I thought I can save the world and I can save the world as my part, you know, through my lyrics and my music, you know, mm-hmm. I do what I can to help. But to control things, I can and I, I stop that. You know, I, 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 I don't control, I cannot. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't even try anymore, you know. It's like you swim in this current and you get so tired and just let it go. You know, and then mm-hmm. you land to me, okay, I'm here now, so what am I going to do? Because yeah. I came here like in March, uh, last year and that's just before the pandemic started. So they booked me five gigs and everything was cancelled except Monterey. So I ended up being eight months in Monterey, you know, which is a lovely city, you know. And I, got, I had a lot of friends there and a lot of things happened and, you know, then I, I'm here in Guadalajara now, in this fantastic city. We've played here many times with Shadow you know. It's, it's like a new, it's not a new thing for me. Mm-hmm. So do you not miss your family back in Finland? Yes, I do, of course. I mean, physical contact is important. It's really important because, you know, online things and they can never take away the real human contact. <laughs> no. I mean, now in the... Covid times, I mean, pandemic things. Everybody's self-isolating and you know, distancing, and people are nuts about the de- sanitizing. And mm-hmm. it's kind of nature's way to say maybe that think about a little, you know, humanity. Why are you? What are the stages? Why are we here now? What is happening in the world? You know, what's behind it? Because humanity and mankind cannot. It has to deal with the virus now. It, it's not going to go away. I tell you that. You know, there will not be a time when there is no virus anymore. I don't think it's going to happen. It's mutating and stuff. So we got to deal with this now. It's mm-hmm. not cool. you know? But these guys in Mexico, they're kind of laid back because the president kind of. I think he said that he has the virus, but I don't think so. It's like Trump. You know, I don't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're using it as a, you know, publicity stunt or whatever for the exposure. Mm-hmm. When I go to the streets here, I mean, maybe in Uber you need the mask, but I don't see anybody wearing masks in the street or restaurants. It's like you have to have the mask when you go inside of the restaurant and then there you take it off. What is that? Come on. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. It's, it's all very strange. I went in the plane, you know, you sneeze and everybody's like freaks out just because you sneeze, you know. So, you know. Well, and when you eat in the plane, everybody takes their mask off. So, yeah, exactly. You have What's to. What's the you point? Have mask. I have this mask that says pinch a COVID, which is like. <laughs> it's kind of some letters have dropped actually. <laughs> Well, somewhere. I always lose it. <laughs> anyway, you know, we have to deal with this thing. And, mm. you know, 
as a as a mankind, we have a, what I think is collective consciousness that everybody is in, in affected with this, and our thoughts are power. They really are, and the more negativity, the more negativity there is, it affects to the planet. Mm -hmm. Be as one as I believe we are meant to be, sending out positivity, positive thoughts, love, all these caring things. We're gonna heal the planet. But are we really doing this? I well, I'm a pessimist. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be <laughs> so yeah. easy to to change. There's got to be a lot, a lot of people that are willing to do so. You know, when you're dealing with arrogant people and then like egos, if you're arrogant, life will teach you not to be. I mean, you're going to be on the floor. You're going to be on the floor, and then when you are there, you start having this contact. You start having, and the goal to me is unconditional love. You know, and that is really the highest form of spirituality to have unconditional love. And when you have this, there's no way anybody can get to you anymore. You know? There's no way because you're completely in peace and it's all inside. You know, it's like this thing that a guy um, drops his keys in the house and there's a power cut, so he has to find the keys of the car, he has to go somewhere. So he starts so searching for the keys. He doesn't find them, so he sees the street lights outside. So he goes out, he starts looking for the keys outside, knowing they're in. So the neighbor comes after 30 minutes, what are you doing? Well, I'm looking for my keys, can I help you? Yes. After 30 minutes, uh, sorry, but uh, where are the keys? Oh, they're inside. So that's how we are, we're looking for the answers outside. It's all inside, the keys are all inside. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you look at the, uh, evolution of mankind, um, it's kind of a, we have these wars, a lot of destruction, negativity, aggression, borders, uh, their system. I think that people can fight the system just by thinking, just by being kind, showing everybody an example, you know. But I believe in humanity. I do believe in. I used to be pessimistic, but I, I'm not anymore. Mm -hmm. I do think that we're going to get there. It's going to take maybe 100 years, but we're surely going to get there. And, and the more people we get to this positive thinking and feeling and sending out love, it's going to heal the planet eventually because nothing can change this. I mean, it's, it's going to happen. You know, I'm, re I'm very positive about this. As I am, as, as I am on this resonating higher, I call it resonating higher frequency. I attract those kind of people in my life that are really super cool, you know. I've seen, I know it's true. And when you start doing this, you really send out positive energy and you attract it because if whatever you put to the universe will come back to you. That's so clear, you know. If you put out hate and anger and negativity, you gotta get it back. Everything's come back to you. Good things come back. Bad things come back. And people call mm -hmm. it karma. Yeah. <laughs> and that's for sure that it exists. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, so, well, this pandemic uh, has uh, certainly affected you. Uh, would yeah. you say financially only or in other ways? Well, it doesn't get to me. I mean, many other ways than financially, but you know, you gotta find your way. I mean, you gotta do lessons and music and you know, whatever you can do. And I don't need that much to live, actually. I mean, so far, every time, I mean, I believe in the universe, I believe in the process of my life, and that the universe helps me because I do believe in that force. And I always believed in that. I just always didn't know. You know, I just, when I, when I look at my life, I see the series of events that led me who I am today, to this place. I don't mean physical place, I mean spiritual place. Mm -hmm. And um, I can see clearly that uh, I'm meant to be here as an artist. You know? And that I have a message too, and it's right there somehow, you know, in my, my lyrics, in my songs. And um, yeah, it's like, um, for me, it's so clear that the, that the universe is there for a reason, you know, it's, it has to be. I mean, how the hell you can create something like uh, a human being, 
so complex, but yet so simple. You know, everything is in order. Universe has uh, natural laws. Everything is in place. Everything is in motion all the time. I mean, there are these things which people that say that it has always been here. You know, but for me, it's like, well, how? You know, why is there a tree? And who did the tree? And why is there? Why is there a human being? Why do we have feelings? Why do we have emotions? You know, why do we have ideas and thoughts? We are here to create and express. That's what I think. You know, and not only artists, because everybody has to speak their truth. And when we do this without anger and hate, we can laugh together and be having different opinions. We don't have to be right, you know, at all. We don't have to be right. So a pandemic for me is um, it's a big reminder for mankind and for me that, you know, uh, we cannot continue anymore like we used to do. It doesn't work anymore. So there's something that prevents us now to do that. I think it, forced, it certainly forced me to take a look to my own personality and my character. You know, a lot of self-evaluation, you know, learning about myself and how I act in the world. You know, I don't spend my days thinking about the virus at all. You know, it doesn't, it's not there for me, actually. It doesn't affect me at all now. Every time I, I didn't have money, the universe provided right there. Just what I need, you know. <laughs> I don't even have a home in the moment. I, I own only this laptop and, and a case of clothes. But I'm, I'm happy because, you know, I can build up my life and, you know, it's going to be there as it's meant to be. I'm not scared. And when you lose the fear, you have everything. You have everything. Well, that's perfect. And this answers uh, my next question. I was going to ask you if you were happy. You just said you are. I'm so that's perfect. I've never been this happy, you know, and because these Mexicans are so positive as well. So it's hard to be uh, depressive here. In Finland, mm. it's different when you go to the metro subway in the morning. Everybody's like, no, nobody's even watching each other. And they're just with the smartphones and things and nobody is paying attention. And it's kind of depressive. Scandinavia and Finland certainly can be really depressed, depressive. I mean, I know because mm -hmm. I was born there. And, you know, but, you know, you can be even in the middle of that, you can be the light to yourself. You, know? you, can, you can shine. You can really shine. I think it's important. Perfect. Um, I just saw your hand here. So you had a, a tattoo recently done in your hand, a new one. Does it have a meaning? It is black diamond. Ah, of course. <laughs> it has a meaning. And then I have this, Fleur de Lis. Mm -hmm. yes. So and why is this? Yeah, I don't understand that one. Triple seven is like, I believe in numerology heavily and, and uh, they call it angel numbers. I mean like a pattern is like seven, 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 one, 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 one. Um, one, 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 one is a really important because when I landed to Monterey two months ago, I landed exactly 11 past 11. You know, mm -hmm. and, you know to be able to land after 36 hours trip exactly on that exactly. number. What are the odds? You know, and I see numbers every day in the car plates, and it's called synchronicity. That's from Carl Jung. He introduced this. It's meaningful coincidence. You go to a club and you hear a certain song. For example, at one of point of my life in '97, I was in Madrid, in Spain, and I was having some walks, and uh, I just happened to hear "Season of Change," my song, from the window. Now, what are the odds that I have to go exactly the point out from the house, walk exactly the distance, exactly arriving that second to hear that song? It's yeah. not a call. Oh, Jung call is synchronicity, and, and it's, it's really um, how the universe works. So they say that angels send us these numbers to guide us to our life. So, triple seven. 777, 333, 555, every number that's four or five, or even seven, eight, it's an angel number, they say. I kind of agree, but I don't know about the angels though, but I think they might be there, I hope, I certainly hope. But numerology 
really cool things. I'll tell a lot of YouTube videos about that. Everybody who's interested. You can, for example, calculate your life number, your life path number, uh, your number based on your name. You know, mine is seven. Mm -hmm. My number ah. is seven. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a good. Yeah. It's a very mm -hmm. good. One. And why the fleur de lis? Uh, what's uh, the meaning behind this? Yeah. Well, it's more like a, uh, back in 93, I, I just saw it and it felt um, right to have it in my album, Classical Variations. And it's there ever since, every album has it, either logo or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a spiritual sign for me, but it's from France. And, and, and it, it seems to be like a, uh, from the kings. It's like king, but somebody told me that actually that's a, a, a fleur de lis, like a, a flower of Jesus Christ. You know, mm -hmm. lily flower is it? It's, it's a Jesus Christ uh, flower. Well, I'm not religious at all. I mean, I don't subscribe to any religion. I don't. I don't believe in them. I, I certainly don't follow them. I mean, I'm interested in everything. So I, I read a lot of about Christianity, Buddhism, and stuff like that. And, I think for me, it's like try to find my own way and and not to follow the pre, like pre like somebody laid a road to me. You know, I always said about Christians having these philosophical discussions about like there's a way to God or to Christ. But then I say, why cannot go? Why I cannot go to God without Christ? You know, why why I cannot go to my Father without Christ, without the Son? Because it's in the mm -hmm. Bible. And these people don't probably know that the Bible was put together 400 years after Christ in Rome by a pagan emperor, Constantine. But they really made Christ divine. And when they decided which gospels to take, put in there, which exclude, and they exclude, excluded, for example, the gospel of Mary Magdalene, who was not a whore, was a wife of Christ, you know. And they say that Mary Magdalene was the last person at the cross, hugging the cross. Everybody else escaped. And, and then you, uh, you will get to this debate that she was not a whore. She was a whore, because why? Because it's in the Bible. So the only argument is this book. It's not allowed free thinking, you know, around this subject at all. And that's to me, the only, really the biggest thing, I cannot follow any, any pattern like that. I have to have my own beliefs and what, I, what I've seen is true, you know. And there are some people that say that God doesn't have religion, you know. And, and, mm -hmm. and many people have problem with the word God because it's so religion-oriented word, you know. Why well, it's not to me. I mean, for me, it's a creator. It's like, a infi I call it infinite intelligence. It's got to be that, you know, because it's a cat for me. How can you, for example, create a cat? And why? <laughs> you know. well, that's what I mean. So it's big creation and it's, it's a big play you know, going on in here. And you can make the worse. And I think what is, what's going to be your worse? That's the question. You know. mm -hmm. Every day is important here. You know, my friend had a, like, a boyfriend who was 40 years old in Finland and had a heart attack. You know, died. I met the guy, he was a friend of mine. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I lost my father when I was 12. I certainly had my, my um, losses, like everybody here. But, you know, when you really learn that, 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 that nothing can be taken for granted here, you look at every day as a gift, as a blessing. You know? It's not that just you wake up in the morning and, you know, you go to work and you have to do that, of course, but there are so many ways to do it. You know? Like when I used to have a car, I was driving to whatever destination, always in a different way. Never the okay. same way. And people are like, why are you doing that? I mean, you lose gasoline and stuff. I don't care. I, I want to you know, explore different ways. And mm -hmm. they call it road. Roadless travel means that there's two paths. And you can take the one that's pretty late for you, or you can go to the forest or to snow, and you can really do your own. It's more mm -hmm. deep. It's worthwhile. And I always say it to me, because I, I only can speak about my own experiences, my own beliefs. I would never try to make other people to think I how I am thinking. I would never debate mm -hmm. it. You know, if there's a person that wants to have an, an argument, a discussion, I just don't do that. 
I don't do that. I don't consume my energy That's for good. that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of suckers who they want your energy, you know. So you just gotta you know, place the yeah. ball or Lily. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because um, there are some lyrics of yours that are that feel very spiritual. Um, yes. So you would consider yourself to be spiritual, but not following, you know, like a certain. Yeah, I think every day is different for me. I mean, spirituality is a huge subject, but you know, it's a kind of a, my own belief system, as I call it. You know, the way I see the world. But I'm willing to change it. I'm willing to talk with people that can teach me things and everybody can teach you things. Everybody can teach you things. Whoever you meet during the day can teach you a lot of things. If you're aware. And for me, the goal of spirituality is to be conscious as a human being. I'm conscious about my choices and the choices have uh, consequences. That's all it really is. You know? and, and for me, it's like I've been taken care of here, protected. You know? And it's not even a matter of belief or faith. I think everybody is here. You know? We just spend a certain amount of time here on this planet and then we go. Mm. And I do think we're home. I think, I think we're all going home. I think mm. so. But, you know, religions are such a powerful thing and there's a lot of money behind that. Always. That Catholic church here in Latin America is huge. And I went to Catholic Mass in Mexico City just to see it. You know. It's like the same thing and in Europe and in Finland. You, you, you stand up and you sit, stand up and you sit, stand up and you sit. You know. It's like the same thing. And then at, at the end of the Mass, they collect money. And you see these golden, really expensive things already there. And it's like, you want more or what? You know? And then in here, I've seen outside of the church, people really like, I saw a person sleeping next to the wall of the church, you know. And to me, it's that the question is, like, is God inside or outside of the church? Well, certainly not inside. For me. It's fancy and beautiful inside, cool looking, you know, these paintings and gold and things, statues. But which one is more important? The person in the ground without nothing or the whole glory inside, you know. Which one is the glory of God at the end? Mm -hmm. well, just uh, some food for thought. So, will, for example, this, um, these um, thoughts, uh, do you think they could be in your next book? You said you were thinking about uh, writing. Certainly, yes. I have, I have some like uh, points already. I mean, I'm, I'm starting to write. I, I want to do this because I feel it's one of the things the universe is asking me to do and I follow that call, you know, it's like I'm here to do that. I'm here to serve, you know, I'm really here to serve. And, and I can do so many things with my talent and, and expressing myself. And certainly I want to write this book and just put it out, you know, for my system. And then ready for the next, it's all express expression because if I don't do that, I get like really weird feelings, you know, I it's energy, it's like I have to do something, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, I think it's for me like one one more stepping stone on my career. Because I wrote one book before and they released my biography also you know, for him to write. It's kind of a, everything is telling me that there's a new phase starting on my life here this year. So. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be the last I think. So taking me to be like a some fifty five next month. You know, and I'm going to towards it in, in 10 years, I'm 65. And, you know, then you go to different things, you know, you start doing hopefully different things. And, you know, you see that your life is uh, where things go. You know? But I don't plan things. I do have goals, very specific ones, even material goals. I really specifically write what I want to have, you know. I believe in that. But then I forget it and I think it's operating. And you send out to the universe these things. And then it, it you know, when I'm, when I'm sometimes in a really bad place, uh, losing faith and stuff, I just say, okay, you do what it, I mean, it's, you know better than me. So I, I submit to that group. I just, you know, okay, with that. So. And then uh, asking questions and stuff, I've certainly got answers. I certainly got answers. You know. There's a guy mm -hmm. called Neil Walsh in the States. Um, 
who wrote a book called Conversations with God. And it's like a, he was really poor, sleeping in the in the in the parks and stuff, no homes, nothing, no money, and he was really angry to God and saying like, okay, they started uh, writing questions to, like yellow notepads, like this, something like this, and he got answers as a thought back, you know, and he wrote a book of this, and three mm -hmm. books and became best a huge, suddenly exploded totally. And I was reading this book um, in a plane to some, I think, uh, Europe in some festival. And I read the book and I was thinking, but that was like 97, where I was really thinking a lot about these things. And so I go to the terminal, I, terminal, I sit down, and the, the road he comes with, with his briefcase and puts it down and says, there's a God and he loves me. You know? And I, I'm thinking all the way, reading this book, is, is there a God? And the guy <laughs> There's a God and he loves me. So wow. It, it fucking works. And also, uh, there was a time when I did a lot of what they call affirmations, which is like affirmations, like um, a certain sentence to repeat. For mm -hmm. example, I was, um, um, there's a guy called Chad, uh, Joseph Murphy, nothing to do with Murphy's Law, but he wrote a book called Power of the Subconscious Mind, which is huge. So I did this affirmation when we, we came from some festival and with a lot of gear, a lot of equipment. We needed a taxi, a big one, in Helsinki Airport. And there was like 50 meter line. And I'm affirmating 30 minutes, like we are getting a big taxi and I'm thankful for it. 30 minutes, nothing else in my mind. And uh, I see then there's one lady before us and I see a big taxi coming to her. <sighs> Still in you? And the lady goes, uh, puts the foot and stops, turns around and said, you need this more than we. We got it. You know? <laughs> yeah. So it really seems it worked. And, you know, the power of the subconscious mind is outside of the time and space. This cannot be explained. It's like a conscious mind is like a ping pong ball. ball and then the subconscious mind is like basketball. It's so big. Mm -hmm. but there, there's a sub, subconscious mind. Which they say is a god, you know. But all, all is theory, you know, because we have this need as a humanity and human beings to know how things are. Yeah. Find out why there's a universe expanding, why is it certain, why there's a speed of light expansion, why, mm -hmm. why I mean, is it really does it really matter? You know? Does it really matter? <laughs> I guess we're naturally curious. <laughs> yeah. Is it really curious to know that like about the expansion of the universe, like why? <laughs> why is there a tree? You know, I go outside and I see this fantastic, beautiful tree. I think why, why, and how is it there? It just is. It just is. <laughs> mm -hmm. But of course, science. We need doctors. We need medicine. Of course, it's fantastic. You know. By the way, now it's eleven eleven here. I see the number. Ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. In this, in this screen. So yeah, I mean, but you know, everybody has to find out their own way. You know, make their money and and, and all the stuff. You know, and I found my calling very early, and that's music and arts. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm really thankful for this every day. It's, it's, it's uh, I I had probably two respectable jobs in my life. The first one was I was painting machines in the factory in Finland, seven to four work, woke up at five, and the other one was copying diskets, floppy diskets in the company, those mm -hmm. two. <laughs> and that is only being used all my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very curious. <laughs> so my last question, so mm -hmm. plans for the future. You've got uh, the Avalon, which has already been mastered, I think. Yeah, it's ready. I heard it like, the other day. It's fantastic. It sounds really cool. There are some really nice vocals and songs in there. I think it's going to come out maybe in June or something. And then I'm going to do this fourth solo album. I think it's going to come out around October. And the book is there, and the musical is coming with tours. Um, I don't know 
what else, but it, it could be. I mean, but I live day by day basis, so you know, everything can happen. I, mean, I do think that um, this is going to be my year. I feel it in every every positive way that because I send out this energy all the time and it comes back to me and it gets multiplied and it seems to affect the other people's lives too. Not to say that I am like, like in some narcissistic way affecting these people's life, but it seems I have this kind of a talent, you know, as an example, set out an example. But that's a good way to to influence people with your example, you know, not just to do things, you know. And there was a time when I was giving a lot of advices, but I was really good in that and not following them myself. <laughs> really good. So I stopped doing that and just I live my life and I'm thankful for each and every day. And you know, next week I'm going to Finland on Tuesday, Monday, and you know, then going to come back here. I'm going to produce another band. In, I'm producing a band here for Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. Fahrenheit and. There's another one called Operos that's in Toronto, Canada. I'm going to produce them. It's like a kind of progressive stuff. And then my record, and now I'm collecting and, and inviting certain people if they want to do this. So all of them are my friends. I cannot say the names because before they say yes, I cannot really. Jens is the only one really. And, 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 and Le Pond of, of Symphony X who do the pays. Those are the only two people I really know. Achilles Priest, they may be the drums, but you know, I don't know about that yet. I mean, I have to talk about some issues with them. Um, but there are many ways to do Also, many ways to put out the music these days, because I guess CDs are not really existing anymore. I don't know if record companies even do them anymore. But, mm. you know, I put out, uh, because what Radiohead did with, with, um, in Rainbows, they put out as a pay what you want. They set up a website, you know, they, they said, OK, this is the MP3s. To pay what you want, and it seems to be that they made a lot of money with this way. Mm -hmm. People are really skeptical. Skeptical. They're saying that you don't get anything this way, but it seems some people really paid a lot of money for this, and then they made a physical CD. After that, so they ended up making the biggest album of their career. With this matter, you know. <laughs> and now, it's, when as a musician, as a band, you know, the money is not there anymore. I mean, I used to get a lot of money for as an advance, but now it's nothing. You cannot live with that money anymore. You cannot. It's impossible. So mm -hmm. it's a whole new ball game. You have to be really inventive and creative. But you're gonna get there. You just just stay positive and look for solutions instead of complaining. You know? Complaints will get you nowhere. You know? They will really hold. You know, just gotta be positive, life affirming, send out good energy. You know, make plans. And then leave it out to the universe. Yeah. That's that's my life. That really sums up what I do. Great. I have to give you thanks for doing this because you know I, I kinda needed to get these things out and I'm gonna put it this to my YouTube if I, I don't know how to do it actually, but I have people who <laughs> far more intelligent than me with technical matters. <laughs> Well, I hope, yeah, I hope the, like, the recording was, uh, like, it was well recorded and that we, like, I, both, at least looks, both appear, not only me or whatever, because I don't know I, if you see only me in the screen. Yeah, there's two windows. I think whatever I see here is going to be on the recording. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, if that's okay. <laughs> I mean, in this, you are much bigger than me. You know, yeah, this. that's right. So I thought, I, I hope it's not all the time like this. <laughs> If, uh, it's the way I like to do this, you know. I think it's oh. better, and you're oh, far better right. too. So, you know, I think you're, <laughs> you're going to be more. Happy yeah, but I'm nobody. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah. if people come come to like see so, you, you, know, see you gonna... so if they see you like this. <laughs> Thank you for this. Oh, I think I've lost yeah. you. I don't know. Maybe you can change it afterwards. No, I'm here. Okay, I that's it. I think it's going like slow. The I'm gonna stop this.